morning, everybody. You're very welcome to the next episode of our Founders Forum Insights series. It is Friday the 10th of July. The sun has come back out and hopefully we're going to get uh, Mother Nature giving us uh, some of her jewels between now and the end of the summer because we could all probably do with it. Um, we're joined this morning by uh, a panel of experts on uh, the subject of funding for early stage uh, businesses. So today we're going to be talking about funding. What does the funding landscape look like? How has COVID impacted that funding landscape? And what's going to happen between now and the end of uh, 2020? So joining us on the call this morning, we have uh, Richard Watson from, from DBIC. DBIC have recently launched uh, a fund and are open, cautiously open for, for business and, and doing deals. Um, so you're very welcome, Richard. Uh, next, we have Brian Caulfield, who many of you may know, uh, vet veteran VC and longtime serial entrepreneur. He's also chairperson of Scale Ireland and still a partner with uh, Draper Esprit. Uh, we have Andrea Reynolds. Um, Andrea is CEO and founder of Swoop Funding. Um, and Andrea is a particularly expert in that uh, the UK funding market and is going to share some insights as to what's going on in the UK and how Irish companies can, can leverage that. And last, but by no means least, we have Alan Kelly, who is, as many of you will know, one of our facilitators on Founders Forum. Uh, Alan works with Focus uh, Consulting, who are a full service corporate finance house, but specialise, I suppose, from an investor perspective on connecting projects to high net worth individuals who are interested in investing, mainly in tech and healthcare. So that's our panel. So you're all very welcome, delighted, and thank you so much for sharing your time with us this morning. So I guess my first question, so what does the funding landscape look like today? Um, we've got lots of our Founders Forum companies who are hoping to go on funding rounds of various sizes over the next couple of months. So really, from your perspective, what, what lies ahead for them? I can give it from my perspective. Yes, so please do, Andrea. Yeah. Um, so I, I, just from, from our perspective, uh, we're probably in similar stages to some of the companies that are, that are in Founders Forum. Um, and just a couple of things uh, to note. Um, so Irish companies getting ready to, to go for funding probably in, in Q4. Um, I would say to them, there's a few things you could be doing to broaden your investor market. Um, but in, and we'll speak into that in a bit, but on the whole, I would say the last quarter has been a complete car crash uh, for, in terms of growth stage uh, funding. Um, and specifically over in the UK, um, I, it, there's been an 83% drop in, in early stage uh, funding. This is um, the last quarter just gone. Of the last quarter okay. just gone yeah now i think that's the worst of it we've seen the worst of it uh, and all really that happened was there was a retreat where uh, funds were looking after their portfolio understandably um and the level of investment uh, funnily enough did not drop significantly uh, there was actually more money going into late series a series b but the real the real casualty in all of this was the, the early stage growth um, so that that so was the last funds quarter. were looking after the companies they had already invested in so anyone coming new into that was getting left out yes exactly okay. that um, we speak to the funds we've got over 600 funds on on the platform and we have this continual weekly check-in with them to see what their sentiment is um, and I have to say even already in the last week we are seeing a little bit of an, a re-emergence so okay. when you're at, when the analysts are speaking to each other it was a case of I'm doing nothing for the next couple of months I'm looking after my portfolio yeah you can send me stuff but truthfully I'm not going to look at it whereas now it's actually the conversation is we're, we're trying to get back to some normal um, and yes, we're looking after our companies, but you can start sending deal flow across to us now. Okay. So there has been okay. a slight shift. Okay. Uh, and I think we're over that the worst of that uh, massive drop. So I think by the time it comes to Q4, we'll be back into some level of normality and I'll speak about that in a bit further, but okay. I'll, I'll leave it to the others. So, to so, we're, so we're back open for business in the, in the UK is, is tentatively. Yes. Tentatively. yes. Okay. Super. So uh, yeah, broadly speaking, I think uh, I I think that's that's about right, and I think when the Irish Venture Capital Association and Tech Ireland publish uh, publish figures for 
for Q2, we'll probably see a, a similar pattern, not a huge reduction in the amount of capital invested necessarily, but, but fewer new deals being done. Um, I think what's happening, you know, uh, uh, apart from my role with Draper Esprit and Scale Ireland, I'm also an LP investor in, in a number of smaller venture capital funds around Europe. And what those funds are doing is very much taking a step back, triaging their existing portfolio quite, quite aggressively to, to see kind of who's in good shape, who needs help, you know, who, who, who might actually not survive and kind of making decisions about, uh, in many cases, allocating additional capital to existing portfolio companies okay. in order to ensure their survival. And as a result of that, you know, diverting capital away from, uh, from, from new investments. Um, uh, I think what is starting to happen now is people are have kind of worked their way through that process and they're now back in a frame of mind where they're saying, okay, maybe we've got two additional deals remaining um, in this fund, two additional new deals, whereas kind of six weeks ago, they weren't sure if they were going to be able to afford to do any new deals. Okay. But but nonetheless, you are seeing a reallocation of capital uh, away from new deals and towards existing portfolio. Um, um, you're also seeing, I'd say, general caution, um, even funds that have uh, you know plenty of capital available don't have a substantial existing portfolio are definitely going to be more cautious in their evaluation of opportunities. And um, it, it's, it's obviously always very difficult to get good solid valuation information, especially for early stage deals. But I think broadly speaking, what the market has been talking about, and I don't, I don't just mean in an Irish context here, but more broadly, is that valuations will be off by thirty to fifty percent. You know, so that that will obviously yeah. feed, feed into your thinking about uh, about fundraising. And Brian, do you think that thirty to fifty percent kind of um, deviance in valuation is likely to persist into twenty twenty one? Uh, yes, I think it will. I, I, I think in we, we weren't we weren't in a bubble in the sense of the kind of the dot com bubble, but we had seen valuations in some sectors, I would say, racing ahead pretty aggressively. And I think this will have a a kind of a general impact that'll 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 last for a year to eighteen months but potentially, you know. Okay. Now of course it very much depends on the, uh, the, the 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 course of the virus. You know, we're 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 not out of this yet. No, so, yeah. um, so I I I think it's difficult to make predictions about exactly how long that's likely to last. Okay, okay, Richard, we might go to you next, I guess, to just pick up on uh, investment, but proceeding with caution. Um, so you guys have 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 a fund and have. Have funds to invest so do you want to just give us what the, the world looks like from your perspective yeah for uh, thanks Emer. uh yeah good morning all i'm delighted to be on the panel um i, you know, I fully agree with what uh, andrea and brian just said there um as you pointed out Emer, we've just we, we just recently launched a new fund so we're we're kind of very early in our fund cycle which you know would change our behavior versus some of the other vcs that are you know have more uh, you know have portfolios and, and are, have kind of gone inwards uh, over the last quarter and a half Really looking at protecting the portfolios. Um, so in our case, you know, we actually don't have any portfolio companies in our new fund. We previously managed the AIB seed fund, which you know we have forty companies, but we've now got a blank canvas with this fund. So we are kind of outward looking, but you know, as pointed out, uh, you know, we're proceeding with caution. We are, you know, we're still seeing very good deal flow coming through. Uh, since launching in October, we've had over two hundred companies come looking for funding. And uh, we did, uh, we, we issued two term sheets actually, uh, the first in February and then another one in, in May. 
Uh, and what we've done there is, you know, there are certain sectors that uh, I suppose we're, we're proceeding with caution just to see how things pan out in the economy. Um, but the, you know, going, getting back to the kind of valuation point, we, you know, there was a slight adjustment in the valuation of the company that we gave our first term sheet to just to reflect the level of risk. Uh, and what we've done with that one, you know, our fund is really targeting companies from C to Series A stage. Uh, this company would be a little bit earlier uh, on that spectrum, and and we've we've tranched uh, the the investment in that company just to to manage risk and uh, you know give the company some 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 decent milestones to hit over the next year, and then hopefully uh, you know we'll follow on uh, with with performance. Um, overall, like it like it is very challenging out there. Um, you know, I am starting to see some of the VCs with substantial portfolios now looking a little bit more outward than they have been over the last. Uh, period of time which is encouraging um you know in debic we also um there's other colleagues of mine manage hpan yeah um, you know and on the angel side of things there's, there's been a there's been a real slowdown as well they are still in, still doing deals there's a number of deals going on at the moment but with angels similar to a lot of vcs they've invested in you know portfolio of companies and so they're you know they're really looking inward at their portfolios and also you know Many private private angels, uh, high net worth individuals, would have a lot of money tied up in the markets, which which obviously nosedived in, in March, and you know have since recovered. But there's still a lot of uncertainty, so they're proceeding with caution. Um, you know, Enterprise Ireland have really stepped up to the mark and and been very proactive in bringing out a range of measures to uh, to help companies. You know, sort of uh, with bridging rounds, coming out with new convertible loan note instruments, which is very encouraging. Um, so, I mean, overall, uh, you know, on our side, uh, we are actively looking at deals. There are certain sectors. I mean, if you're obviously, if you're in the, the travel sector, you're selling into the restaurant sector or bricks and mortar retail, that's challenging. Uh, so there are certain sectors that we have to be a little bit cautious about until we see how things pan out. But overall, you know, we are uh, going through uh, a pipeline of companies and we're in deep due diligence with with about half a dozen companies. And I'd be confident that uh, a number of those, in addition to the two term sheets that we've issued, will, will lead to deals before the end of the year. Okay, super. Thanks, Richard. Alan, do you want to share what you were saying? Yeah, uh, Imer, thanks. Um, yeah, a lot of the, the people we deal with, um, private investors, they'll have a pot of money where um, some capital is put into venture and private equity funds. They'll have a pot that's wealth managed and then they have a pot where they uh, do direct investment. Um, similar to what uh, the other people on the panel are saying as well as that, you know, they're proceeding with caution. Uh, I would say March and April, like we're complete write offs. Uh, there was nothing happening um, to actually call someone to, you know, offer them the opportunity to, to invest in something, you know, in March and April, you know, the reaction you were getting would be, you know, are you off your head? So we just didn't. Um, so, but we're really encouraged with uh, the activity, you know, through, I suppose, late May and into June, there seems to be, you know, a bit of activity. People are happy to look at stuff again. Um, we have two projects going on at the moment. Uh, typically, where we go out to, to people, it, it generally takes, you know, for raising two to three million, probably takes about eight to 12 weeks. Um, we think it'll probably take 16 to 20 weeks in this okay. environment longer. Um, what we're seeing is that investors, similar to what uh, uh, Richard was just saying there, uh, a lot of the private guys, they're, they're actually holding back uh, capital for projects that they've already invested in. They know there's going to be cash calls. So the checks that they're writing for new um, projects are smaller. Um, so that means you need to find more investors. So it just makes our, our job a bit uh, tougher. Uh, what we're also seeing is that the level of diligence that people are doing is far deeper than they've ever done before because, because of that caution. So the diligence is just going on and on. And um, what we've seen even in, you know, even pre-COVID was that a lot of the sort of high net worth guys are taking a very professional uh, approach to investing. Um, it's getting more professional, so they're using people for diligence, and uh, so the diligence is deeper. It has a different slant. It's mainly uh, fin financially focused, um, so that causes delays as well. So generally, you know, there is activity, 
Um, I think that it'll get more active as we go into uh, deeper into Q3 and into Q4. Um, but certainly people are proceeding with caution. Okay. So if I can just kind of summarize, I guess a couple of the messages I'm, he I'm hearing. So va valuations are getting tougher, more diligence, much longer time scales, And that's an important one. Sometimes we, we'll hear, I had one last week from somebody who was like, oh no, we're going out for funding. Will you review our, our, our deck? Yeah, sure. When are you hoping to start? Well, we need the funds in by the end of August. And you're like, uh, it's the last week in June, seriously. Um, so that time scale point is really uh, is really useful, and that focus on on you know the funds protecting existing and indeed high net worth individuals protecting existing investments, reducing the amount that's available for the early the new investments is important. Can, can we just though none of us have a, a a crystal ball? Is there a sense amongst you about you know? I guess everything stopped for, for lots of us right in in in, in March and, and into April and certainly we're definitely seeing with clients a kind of a getting back to doing business albeit that you know lots of us are still working from home and you know that we're, we're not out of the woods as, as Brian said we're not out of the woods with this this virus yet but there, there is a sense of getting back to doing business which I'm I'm, I'm picking up from you Without the crystal ball, any sense from any viewers to what that trend looks like in out in the market, and and you know, do we see that? Do you see that accelerating, or do you see the caution staying as we move into to twenty twenty one? I I think the, the the caution will remain for you know a, a reasonably significant period of time. Um, you know, when when you think about uh, uh, institutional investors, they have LPs. Those LPs tend to allocate a very small proportion of of their assets to to to, to venture and private equity. They're seeing their other assets, you know, uh, price prices depressed. So it's not a time where they want to be selling other assets. The fund commitments to VC and 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 that that impact will take a, a little bit of time to unwind. The other thing that you're going to see, which is going to, if you like, prolong the impact, is that it's going to be extremely difficult to raise a new VC funds now. So we will have fewer new funds coming to the market and you know con congratu congratulations to Richard on getting getting his funds away so because you have fewer new funds coming into the market you know that that means that uh, you know even even a fund like Richard's will be cautious because they're going to be worried about who's going to write the next check you know so I, I think this is an impact that's going to be reasonably prolonged. And I think people will also, I mean, both, both capital and tech are now increasingly globalized. Mm. And because it's so globalized, I think people will be very, very conscious that, you know, infection numbers in the US are accelerating. Uh, South America is an absolute mess. Uh, we're starting to see new kind of substantial outbreaks everywhere from Australia to Israel. And, you know, that, that is definitely going to pr prolong the, the cautious approach for a lot of investors. You're muted, Emer. Sorry, anybody else got anything to add? Yeah, no, I yeah I was, sorry, just, just on, I would 100% agree with that. Um, uh, that's completely what's going on. I would say it's also, um, even in good times, you'd, you'd never be active in July, August anyway. It's like, yeah. just like no, yeah. nothing ever happens. Um, so uh, the way that we're seeing it is um, we will know if, if funds, so, so for example, some of the funds, 
uh, in the UK would have time limits on um, a lot of the distribution of their funds. Mm. So where we need to get to with those guys is once we get to say um, late September, early October, is actually looking at once they've distributed out to their current portfolio, what's left. And they have a time limit on that because it's all based on a tax year. And so anything that's left will need to be distributed by April 4th. And those funds would have been collected pre-COVID. So there, there is, so we're looking at these pockets of potential activity within the, the situation that, that uh, Brian has rightly described. The second one we're looking at for, for our, our customers is uh, the reaction of the, the government funds uh, in relation to the fact this new reality that we live in. Uh, so, um, for example, the British Business Bank are speeding up uh, a lot of the distribution of what they have as called the patient capital. So we're actually having new funds being launched in the UK that would have taken much longer to launch in normal times. So we're, we're focusing on those. Um, and then the last one being uh, in the UK as well, they have what's called the Future Fund. Um, and that's a recognition of uh, VCs being more cautious um, and uh, possibly not looking to, to fill the entire round. Um, and the good news is uh, they recently changed the rules where it's open to non-UK uh, parent companies. So if you have an operation in the UK, but let's say your parent company is in Ireland or the US, uh, they've actually opened it up to, to those organizations now. So it's a really tough landscape. And what we're trying to do is find those pockets of activity. And then the last thing I would say is we do actually have companies that are being funded because there are companies that are, are significantly growing because of a crisis economy so it's not like it's a oh it's a disaster for no, everyone. it's not bad news for everybody now. yeah no and we actually have funds asking us for those opportunities um and we've seen a spike in in the crowdfunding side of things for those businesses that need more capital because they are experiencing significant growth so the overall picture is it's pretty bleak and static and we'll all have to wait and see what happens over the next 12 months and then it's finding those pockets of despite the the broader picture there are certain bits of activity going on thanks andrea richard you were going to jump in there yeah i mean it depends on the type of companies i mean there's, there's different categories of companies there's, there's a, you know the majority of companies are not in sectors that have been completely wiped out or you know down 95 percent but they're you know they're not doing they're not making any new business or you know, sales have stalled, their customers aren't paying. And, and then obviously there's, the, you know, there's the companies that are in the really bad hit sectors. Uh, and then there's the small proportion that are in sectors that are flying along as a result of COVID. So they've actually accelerated. Uh, now, you know, as a fund, you know, we, we, we kind of have to look beyond just, I suppose, you know, some of these companies are being adaptive and doing this out of necessity to survive. Others, like you say, in the digital health space are really seeing increased adoption out of necessity that will probably lead to, you know, changes in behavior uh, and acceptance amongst clinicians of this new way of working. So we kind of have to be careful when we're looking at the companies, you know, that are flying along. Is this just a short term kind of COVID contortionism, you know, coming yeah. up with a, you know, repurposing the business, which is, you know, companies are doing out of necessity or, or opportunity or, you know, both. Um, but I but suppose it may not have longevity to it that are flying along, you know, um, that, that that's going to kind of last rather than yeah. just being a kind of short term uh, sort of, you know, solution into into these markets that are, you know, into the healthcare system in particular. Um, you know, so when we're looking at companies, you know, we are starting to see definitely, uh, you know, the majority of companies that are in this kind of bucket where they're selling into, you know, they're mainly B2B software companies and they're selling into sectors that, you know, haven't been massively hit like travel and, and retail. Uh, and, and business is starting to sort of pick up uh, the first few months, you know, their customers, like everybody else, was just trying to regroup and adjust to this new way of working. And slowly but surely, we are seeing signs that, you know, customer our companies are re-engaging with their pipelines and having meaningful discussions, which are promising. Um, and so they're kind of the, the, the majority of the companies we're kind of looking at. We have a few in the digital health space, but the majority would be in that category where they haven't been flying along but they're starting to see business slowly come back um you know probably as a vc we don't look at too many b2c businesses it's really b2b 
uh, B2, B2B though has been more heavily impacted than B2C, but the, the B2Bs where companies are selling to large corporates, that's taking longer because a lot of corporates have just put a blanket ban on, on kind of uh, unnecessary or non-critical spend. So I think some of those companies might take, might take a bit longer to see their sales pipeline uh, kind of open up again. So the companies, you know, what we're really looking to see is long cash runways uh, in the companies that we're looking to invest to, you know, to, you know, instead of 12 or 15 months, we're looking at sort of, you know, 18 months. Can the company remain lean enough until things really start to pick up? Um, you know, I think across the board in VC, you know, this shift came about before the start of the COVID uh, crisis. You know, there was this just obsessive focus on growth at the expense of everything else. And there has been a kind of an increasing shift to focus on profitability. So rather than just throwing tons of marketing spent and trying to grow revenue as fast as possible, you know, the market does want to see companies actually, you know, having a pathway to viability. Um, we're, not, we're not looking for that, say, within the first six or 12 months, but we want to see companies commanding high margins uh, and not just bur burning through tons of cash at yeah. the expense of everything else, you know, getting revenue up at the expense of uh, and that and that cash row runway is interesting because we did a bit of analysis on the companies coming into founders forum and what we discovered you know over a period of a number of years is that the, typically within six, two quarters two to three quarters of joining founders forum which is typically just after they've done their 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 seed round that they're, they're they're starting to run out of cash or they're back on the the the, the funding trail so uh, I think the takeaway for me from, from Richard's point there is, you know, focus on extending cash runways as, as long as possible is, is a critically important. And presumably, if they're going out for next round of investment, that's something the investors will be looking at is, is you know, where are they at on, on cash burn? Yeah, Emer, just to add, we're, we're seeing that from investors at the moment. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of the questions that they're asking are, based around, you know, how's the company coping with COVID? First of all, even internally, how are you managing the team? Um, you know, is everyone stepping up to the plate? Uh, all that sort of stuff. What sort of resilience is in the, in the team? Then looking at the sales cycle and the impact on, uh, you know, on B2B sales, just getting decisions from companies. That's all being pushed out because, you know, procurement departments like to get together and have a meeting <laughs> face to face and, you know, kick it around that that's not happening at the moment so it's all just being pushed out that has a consequential impact on cash flow so the business plan or the financial model is just moving out to the right yeah. and that has an impact on how much money you're going to need to to hit your value milestones so ultimately the investor wants to know are you raising enough cash do you have enough cash what happens if there's a second wave what happens if the you know you don't get this v-shape which I, like i can't see the v-shape happening but, um, you know, how, how are you going to trade through that and, and survive? Um, so, you know, it's really important to, you know, manage that cash flow and build in all the sensitivities that you can into that, that model. Okay, super. So I, I guess, I think, sorry, Brian, go on. Sir, I, I was just going to say, I think uh, Andrea gave some very, very good advice in, in terms of really looking to identify where there are pots of capital, you know, so in terms of thinking about who, who you target, well, you target Richard, obviously, and you, you, you know, you target other, other, other places where there, there are pots of capital. The other thing that I thought just was, was worth mentioning, I mean, Richard mentioned Enterprise Ireland, and there is a pretty significant pot of capital available within, within Enterprise Ireland, to support the liquidity needs of of companies you know 180 million has been allocated so far only about 5 million has been approved so you know from a scale ireland point of view we'd love to see that accelerate and, and that capital actually being being deployed a bit quicker but i think the advice to companies relating to that is you know go and talk to your da in enterprise now enterprise ireland now open the conversation because it is taking a little bit longer to deploy that capital than, than we'd like to see so so open the conversation now don't don't wait don't, don't wait. wait yeah that's really right. that's really right. useful advice 
point uh, just uh, to add we're, we're doing a lot of the financial planning grants for enterprise ireland companies at the moment and uh, it's one thing that we're encouraging founders to to have that conversation with your da because they're developing a fa financial plan and they're making assumptions around what ei might do and I, like we're saying to them have the conversation find out and what they you know, will if do it, if I say that you know they might do 125, push for 150, push for 175, push as hard as you can because this is the opportunity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and th th those financial planning grants, you know, have been uh, I think about 150 companies or so now have availed of that, and and companies can either use their own uh, corporate finance or you know uh, accountant to to advise and, and help on that, and some some are using you know Enterprise Ireland have a panel that they uh, that they they usually give company a choice of companies a choice of three. Um, and on the, the sort of, uh, you know, Enterprise Ireland really were very proactive and uh, came out sort of late April or the beginning of May with the, you know, Brian mentioned the 180 million sustainable enterprise fund. Uh, and they have, they are being flexible there and they are sort of fast tracking. I know that, that, there, that there have been a number of state aid technicalities around undertakings and difficulty uh, and market participant principal issues as well, but they've been working pretty hard at the European level to, to kind of put in place temporary frameworks to get around some of these issues and uh, you know they are being quite flexible uh, and you know I'm hearing companies going in and getting getting approved within a few weeks you know mm -hmm. which in normal circumstances you would expect it might take a few months and EI there is flexibility there you know in terms on the match funding side of things where you know they are encouraging companies to obviously try to get some match funding from the existing investors but you know we're match funding isn't forthcoming they are you know willing to uh, accommodate those the door is still open yeah yeah, so yeah they're they're absolutely looking to find ways to support companies and it it, it won't always be sef um and that is adding a, li a little bit of a layer of complexity in terms of you know figuring out what structures are going to be used to support an individual company and and, and that's why it's so important that you engage as soon as possible Okay. Yeah. Just on the, uh, uh, Richard mentioned the undertaking and difficulty uh, for the, the SEF. They actually dropped that last week for companies with less than 50 employees. So that was major benefit for, for companies. A lot of companies were struggling to pass that test. Uh, so they're now, um, now they've dropped it. That's a major uh, positive. Super. And I think the one thing we're definitely seeing is that the, the instruments that got put in place quickly back in March, you know, are getting tweaked as time goes on to make them more appropriate. So that, that's, uh, that's a positive. So I, I guess we might, we might move to starting to think about wrap up. And I guess a, a question for each of you, which is if you were a, you know, if you had a founder sitting in front of you who was planning to go out for funding uh, between now and the end of 2020, what advice would you, uh, would you give them? I mean, it depends on, on, on the stage the company's at and how business is. If they're really in financial difficulty, but haven't, can't demonstrate, you know, a return to, to business and kind of, you know, medium and long-term growth, then, you know, you know, obviously consider bridging rounds. Um, and that's a part of the, the, you know, the reason for the EI, some of the EI funding um, to, to, to give companies the liquidity, maybe to fund them for another six months or nine months uh, until, uh, they could sort of bed down new plans and uh, I suppose the whole COVID situation, maybe we have a little bit more clarity on that. Um, you know, if companies are really in a good position and have a good plan, uh, you know, we do encourage companies, it was touched on earlier on, to put in, to do scenario testing and, and scenario analysis in their plan, just to look at the various uh, potential scenarios that could occur over the next six to 12 months. Um, if companies are kind of in a good position um, and primed for, for, for growth over the next 12 to 18 months, then of course, you know, come to the likes of ourselves uh, with our new fund. We are, as I mentioned, actively looking out uh, at deal flow at, uh, for, for new deals at the moment. Um, you know, I, even if you're not quite ready, start building out your network of, of investors now. So come to ourselves, go and talk to other investors. Uh, no, it's it's good to form those relationships. It, you know, it, it is all about relationships. So, you know, even if you think you're maybe six months too early or thereabouts, do, do reach out. Um, good to have an initial call and, and look at nurturing that that kind of funnel of in, investors. If you're not ready now for for down the road, okay. um, and of course, just allow enough time to 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 close the round things. 
as, as uh, Alan touched on earlier, um, you know, companies or investors are probably spending more time on diligence. So, so make sure your data rooms are in order and just allow enough time to, 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 to fundraise. It can take six to nine months uh, to close around. So you just need to, to take that into consideration. Okay, so start early. Thanks, Richard. Um, I'd say uh, I absolutely agree with what Richard said. The, the other kind of things that I would add is, you know, face up to COVID-19, right? Um, investors are going to ask you about what's the impact on your business? What has it been so far? And what's the likely impact in, in the future? So you need to face up to that and, you know, if effectively, if you like, have a story around how, how COVID-19 is going to impact your, your business in the future. Um, secondly, kind of to go back to Andrea's point about uh, targeting investors, what, one of the challenges is, is going to be that no VC will ever tell you that they are out of the market, right? Um, it's just something that VCs don't want, don't want to do. So I, I think you need to be a little bit better at kind of diligencing the institutional investors that you're talking to. You know, is it five years since they last raised a fund? If it's five years since they last raised a fund, they have no money odd, left. <laughs> they, they, yeah, and what money they do have left is almost certainly primarily allocated to their existing it's portfolio true. rather than to 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 any more new new deals. So you know, just be really really careful about your targeting, and ask ask the question. You know, ask the the VC. How many more new new deals? How many new deals are you, are you planning to do from your current fund? Because it was raised in 2016, so you know how many new deals are you planning to do? And uh, you know, I, I I wouldn't say be aggressive about that, but 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 ask ask those kind of due diligence uh, questions. The other thing, you know, just in terms of putting around together quickly if you're relying on new investors for that round you should expect it to take very significantly longer than might have historically been the case okay. if it's an internal round you may be able to get it done quickly and i i would advise like if, if, you, if you do need to raise capital quickly then you should be looking at Enterprise Ireland and existing investors as your first port call and trying to pull something together with them. Um, if you're relying on on new investors, it's going to take longer. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, my uh, uh, my thoughts are a few things. I would maximize your options and don't just think about your local market. You have to start thinking outside of that. Um, the UK is one option, but for example, other markets haven't been as drastically impacted by COVID as say somewhere like the UK, for example. So you, there might be another reason for you to look at another market. Like, so for example, we're, we're entering the Australian market. Uh, we've got our uh, market entry grant from, uh, from Enterprise Ireland. And uh, there's a whole investor scene over there that we're talking to right now. And the opportunity for our product over there is, is massive. So um, we're, we're opening up our VC conversation to, to other territories that are also useful for us to expand into. Uh, the second thing I would say is you need to start seriously getting creative on, on prolonging that discussion with your VCs. And apart from going back to Enterprise Island and your, and your investors, you need to eke out every other a potential cash point there is, whether it's your R&D tax credits, whether it's uh, setting up a subsidiary in the UK and applying for Innovate UK grants and then marrying that with something from our, like you just can't be sitting there thinking, oh, I'm just going to go talk to, to VCs. The, the last conversation you should be wanting to have right now is, is a conversation with a VC until we start to see what the lay of the land is. Um, so that, that's kind of my, my, my thinking. And then the other thing I would say is, um, 
I, we're talking to VCs with zero intention of asking them for funding uh, for at least 18 months. But the conversations we're having is, uh, you're, you're a VC in our sector, we want to get to know you so that you can get to know us so that yeah. by the time we ever come to have a discussion with you, you're comfortable that when we tell you this is a target of ours, you know whether we meet them or not, because I'll have told you the last 12 months. So um, like I'm doing about three calls a week uh, to funds that I were so not ready for yet, but it's the getting to know you uh, phase. And actually VCs quite like that, uh, where you're not saying, oh, are you, you're just getting to know them. And, and actually one thing we always say to them is, what, what new KPIs do you want to start seeing? So when we do come to have the conversation with you, what, what KPI, like, so we know the basics, what else in the new world that we live in, what else are you gonna be looking at? So you can learn uh, more. And so by the time you're in front of the one you really want to invest in you, you sound more investable to them. So that, that's just a few things uh, we're up to at the moment that, that yeah. might be useful to others. Uh, and I think that sounds Sorry, Brian. Sorry, sorry, I was going to say, it sounds like Andrea is following the old uh, venture capital advice. If you know, if you if you want money, ask for advice. If you want advice, ask for money. <laughs> it's an oldie but goodie, Brian. It's an oldie it but goodie. <laughs> Alan, over to you. Um, a, a few hours. Uh, be realistic about valuation. Um, you, if you're looking for money from private investors, you're not competing against a similar company in California. You're actually competing against a similar comp a company in Ireland that could be in a different vertical completely that are looking for the same pot of money. So you need to be realistic. That's your competition. So be realistic about it. Be realistic about uh, the time it's gonna to take to raise the money. Um, we always hear three months. It's not going to take three months in this environment. If it does, six. hats off to you. But yeah, uh, research your investors. Um, you know, know exactly you know what that individual has invested in the past. What their green lights and red lights are. Do they invest in the CEO? Is the team? Is the product? Is the market? Just know a bit about them before you go to the meeting, and um, run fundraising as a process instead of just meeting someone for a cup of coffee or on a Zoom call actually manage it as a process. And the last thing is to be resilient. Like this is a black swan event. Companies will uh, fall by the wayside. Some will just about survive, um, but others will thrive. So try and be that company that thrives. Try and do everything you can. As Andrea was saying, what KPIs can I progress over the next few months to, to show and demonstrate that, that the company is thriving? So be that company. Super. That's that's really uh, really helpful, um, ladies and gents. I think we're coming up to time, so I would like to thank you all for your insights and for your time. Uh, it's been a pleasure, and I hope our uh, founders got a lot of value out of uh, this morning's conversation. So thanks now. Thanks. Ian.